Hola. Hola. <laughs> In English, we have a saying. What if the shoe was on the other foot? The meaning of this saying is to help us imagine a situation, but in reverse, to imagine the opposite of a situation. I've often wondered what life would be like if the shoe was on the other foot and girls had been educated before boys. I've often wondered what life would be like if the Bible had been written by women rather than by men. Instead of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, we might have Matea, Marcia, Lucy and Jean. More recently, I've begun to wonder what life would be like if female venture capitalists had been behind the recent rise of tech startups. This is Kiara, and along with her friends Sophie and Ema, she was a winner of the Google Global Science Fair. Their project, which I'll call a startup, have found a bacteria which shortens the germination process for certain crops. And they started this project aged 14. Now I met Chiara and saw her speak at this, com this convention, which was an EU conference for innovators. She spoke about the project, but also spoke about being patronized and patted on the head by adults for thinking outside the box. She urged the audience to stop patronizing her and instead to encourage her to not only think outside of the box, but break out of it and continue going. Now, I believe that if we were to grant Kiara's wish, she would solve world hunger. In doing that, she joined a long history of women in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and maths, who had done humanity a favor and solved big problems. Women like Hedy Lamarr, who was a great Hollywood actress, award-winning, and who was also an inventor of frequency hopping spread spectrum technology, which we use today in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Or women like this, Stephanie Kwolek, who invented Kevlar, which is what makes bulletproof vests bulletproof. And here in Spain, she joined the ranks of women like An Angela Ruiz Robler, who in 1949 filed the patent for this, the first ever e-book reader. Now these women did this in centuries past, and they're the most recent in a long line of women who have been doing this at times when it has been difficult and discouraged for girls and women to take an interest or passion or even study science, technology, engineering and maths. There are countless examples of women who have made huge advances in fields like string theory who have had to apply to university under a male pseudonym. Luckily, we're now in a new century where there are fewer barriers to women who have passions for these things. Women like these, Anna and Teresa, who have invented the Hovdig, which is an airbag-based cycle helmet, which apart from solving the problem of helmet hair, also collects information and data from bicycle incidents. Or ladies like this, Elizabeth Holmes, who is the founder of Terranos, which is revolutionizing the way that we do blood tests and medical tests. What excites me the most are the girls that are doing this the girls that I call the STEMettes, who are solving huge problems. Girls like these teenagers, Bello, Adenike, and Faleke, from Nigeria, who have turned a litre of urine into six hours of electricity. These girls are all doing this in this century, at a time when we have fewer barriers, where STEM education is available to girls and to boys, where the career opportunities abound, and where technology is everywhere and is a pretty exciting industry to be in. But we still have issues, and we still have a pretty big issue. In Spain, only 18% of engineers are female. And in the UK, just 7% of engineers are female. This is a problem because, as you might have noticed, women are fantastic problem solvers. And boy, do we have a lot of problems. After a summit in the year 2000, the UN published these, eight millennium development goals, and the target was to solve them by 2015. I'm not sure if anyone has noticed, but life isn't quite perfect yet. 
It's in all of our interests to ensure that when a Chiara wants to think outside of the box and break out of it in order to solve world hunger or time travel or the latest epidemic disease, she feels empowered to do so. I know what I'm doing to help Chiara. This summer, I'll be running an incubator program for girls like her, age 22 and under, who have their own STEM startups, ideas and organizations which they'd like to take to the next level. We'll be giving them networking opportunities, giving them funding, and we'll be having a pretty good time. If you're not joining me in London, there's a lot that you can do. Start early with the girls around you. We've all got daughters, nieces, cousins, goddaughters, and friends. Buy them the right kind of toys and allow them to explore being a t an engineer or a technologist. And don't try and talk them out of it and don't ridicule them for wanting to pick that way in life. We are all also parents, teachers and influencers. And so we should make sure that us, we ourselves are conscious and aware of these fantastic women in STEM here in Spain, across the EU and around the world. And we should introduce them to our girls and to our boys. Finally, at work, in the workplace, have a look at the women in STEM that you have working alongside you and champion them to the next generation, but also to the current one. Here's to Chiara making life a little bit more perfect. And here's to the Stephanies and the Heddies who are solving life's problems now. Let's save humanity one girl-led startup at a time Let's try the shoe on the other foot.